So is the God of the Bible an atheist? Is the God of the Bible an atheist? Let's talk about the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures, and within certain theological contexts, it's inclusive of the New Testament. So is the God of the Bible, so the God of the Hebrews, is, is he an atheist? Can, can God, especially the God of the Bible, this is the context, the Bible, you can say from a Hebrew or Israelite perspective, straight to, you know, the Jews, the Yehudi of the New Testament, since it says that Jesus was a Jew, according to the New Testament. So we can safely ask this question as whether the God of the Bible is an atheist. And what does this context of saying atheist mean? Can God be an atheist? Now, one of the... Um, the prompts for this video, and want to just hail up one of the viewers, I think subscribers as well. Um, um, what was it, Zeta? Is it Zeta? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Zeta. I just had to check that really quickly right there. Zeta made a comment and said, "That's your God, Ras Idonis." So we respond, "Well, that's not you know, my God, you know." I was like, um, well, that's not my name, you know, just a question. I questioned that because it was obviously a comment to a video where we spoke about um, QE and, you know, the 70 years, the Israelites and, you know, what happened now and also looking at the scriptures, what happened and one can look at it in a prophetic sense in the past concerning the Jews, the Yehudim. I say we the black Jews of Persia coming out of Babylon after 70 years and the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, being reported to have reigned uh, for 70 years. You know, and we said, well, that's 70 years is prior to the Ethiopian New Year. And just looking at those right there, you know, and just making the observation, sharing that observation, you know, with the viewers and subscribers here. So couldn't get the context of what Zeta actually was referring to, you know, whether it's, oh, that's your God, and kind of like pointing out something like there, whether it was in a positive or a negative sense. We just saw that one said that. So we just commented on the name that, you know, our name is spelled like this, not like that. But all that, you know, we're not, we don't really feel no way about that. But that prompted us to say, you know what, this is a good time to do a video to articulate you know, this particular reasoning that we have had with others. And we might have mentioned it on the podcast here or there. Some might recall that we have kind of addressed this, you know, this whole idea of atheists and atheism, so forth and so on. And what does that mean? And also in the scriptures where we say like, Ain Elohim, Ain Elohim is one way, like in the Psalms where it says, like the fool says in his heart that there is no God. You know, and people look at that from the scriptures and from the Psalms, the Psalms of David, to be like a, a reference to atheism. Now, we've gone into a midrash and a study on that, you know, from the foundational language, from the Hebrew, seeking to bring out, you know, that it's not quite what we might look at it in the so-called 21st century from this perspective, like looking at something in Shakespeare's time or Elizabethan or, you know, Victorian or, you know, a particular old English time, how they use words and what it meant then, you know, to get the proper context of it. So not being able to get the proper context or at least not wanting to, you know, just say, you know, emotionally respond to, you know, what Zeta said. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, maybe you can clarify what you mean by that or, Hopefully you can see our clarity on this particular subject matter concerning God and concerning atheists. You know, what does atheist mean? Like most religious folks will say, well, you know, I believe in God. You know what I mean? If they know the Hebrew, they might say Elohim or, or the YHWH in their particular understanding or enunciation, you know? And they'll say, oh, the fool has said in his heart, well, how do we know what the fool says in his heart? Can you read somebody's heart? Do you have that ability truly to, to read somebody's heart? All right. And the heart, what does the heart mean there in their mind? Some people have this view that that verse means atheism, but the correct context from the Hebrew perspective is when one says Ain Elohim, 
right? The fool, the fool thinks that there will be no judgment, there will be no accounting, you know, for the acts or what deeds done did, right? And because people say, well, if there was a God, you hear people talk about today, if there was a real God, then why all this evil? Why are there like little children, you know, born with certain you know, maybe handicaps, why, what happens to people, you know, people say innocent people, you know, happen. How could these things happen? People might even look at it like accidents, maybe different, what they call accidents, you know, happen to a good person, you know, maybe lost their life or their life was taken from them in some situation. And maybe you believe, you know, that you believe in God or in God in your particular way of believing you've prayed you've done all these things and yet your loved one or someone that you prayed for and perhaps you prayed before for somebody and it worked but in this case it didn't work and you just lose all so-called faith in your god you know or, or what your god belief is i find it to be interesting when someone assumes you know well this or that is my god but don't really ask for well, what is our idea of god you know, because on this platform, this channel and elsewhere, we're going into scripts, we're teaching, we're showing and proving certain evidence that we're able to point to, you know, and coming to certain reasonings and conclusion based on the evidence, you know, from a kind of a scriptural, biblical, scientific literacy perspective, right? Because you need to understand the linguistics. That's why I said about the verse where they say there is no God. That's not referring to atheism. You know, in the ancient times, like they didn't believe that there was a source or a power, you know, or even a divine intelligence behind, behind this, but that there was none in the term Elohim to judge. So Elohim, right, both means in the Hebrew context, especially the scriptural context, it's the name of the powers. And in the Hebrew, the powers in the singularity in the Hebrew for the Hebrews and for the Israelites, for the covenant people. Now, for other people, Elohim means powers in different sense, like the natures, the netaru, right? And when we say the nature of nature, the nature of nature, so we like saying what the scripture says, the God of gods. But the God, right, of gods, according to the Hebrew scriptures, seems to present himself, let's put it like that, according to the use, right, of the singularity, and the singularity puts himself forward as not believing in any other God, that there is no God. Need we go there in the scripts? All right, now, we should not confound this with the area in the scripture where it says there is no God, all right? The fool have said in his heart there is no God. See, people look at that and it's like a one verse thing. They, they pull that one verse in the English translation and they see G-O-D right there. Now I understand why even some of the Yehudi put that little dash when they write like God. Sometimes you see certain Jews when they write, they'll put G and the hyphen there and the D. It reminds me of what it was said to blot out the name of Imalek, Imalek, Gamalek, right? Gamalek. In my lake to, to wipe out, you know, to, to blot out his name, <laughs> right, in every generation, right? So one of the principal names by which, quote, God, now remember, we're looking at translation. So really, Elohim doesn't properly, fully, according to the linguistic science, equals God, but it's the best kind of placeholder we have, right, within the English language to communicate, Right, so we have to recognize the limitations, right? The limitations that we have in the English language, right? And therefore, when things are translated for us, it gives us a little kind of a stepping stone, so to speak. But that stepping stone, depends on how we step on it, can become a stumbling block. We might fall over it. For example, the verse in the scriptures that says that the fool have said in his heart that there is no God. Let's go. So here in the search, right? Um, my sword. So it's three verses, three verses in the Bible, full heart, no God. We have Psalm 1 to chief musician, La Menatia, a psalm. Psalm there, the italicized, you know, areas are not there in the Hebrew, so be of David, Lid Dawid. The fool have said in his heart, Belibo, Ain Elohim. There's no Elohim. Now it's interesting if you look at the the translation right here, you'll see where it says no Elohim and those two words. There is is not there. The italics is not there, right? Um, it's not there in the Hebrew. It's put there by the translator to give a little more sense to the English reader of what the, the approximation of what the 
their understanding of what the Hebrew says. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none, no one that doeth good. All right, let's go on down here. Now, here we have Psalm 51 and 3. Now, Psalm 51 and 3 is a later version. When you study this, right, it's a later version of Psalm 14. So we have like original Psalms of David, right? The more archaic, even the Hebrew is a different sort of structure of Hebrew. It's like when we look at English and we look at Old English, so the King James Version of the Bible, we know this is more Old English. So we can discern it's a different type of English. The way the words are stacked together and the way the words are ordered is different you know, than, say, the way we speak today. So we see that change in language, for example, in English. So we should also recognize that if it exists in one language, it probably is so in the next language. So based on this, we can see that Psalm 14 was more uh, older Hebrew, and it reflects more approximately the time of Dawid, of David, right? The archaic use, uh, uh, older use of Hebrew. Then we have the Kind of an adaptation you know like when a tune a song is adapted so it's the same song inspired by this other tune but then there might be some more or some less or it might be just rephrased so here we have psalm 53 which is a later version right to chief musician here it says upon machalat maskil so you notice machalat is in this psalm not in the other psalm so what does machalat mean this is a psalm still in italicization, Lid Dawid, of David, right? The fool have said in his heart, we got that part right there from the previous, there is italicization, no God. Notice that the word no God is two words, but they only have one word. Now, the one word they have is Elohim. The one word they have is Elohim. Now, why am I saying this? Because when we look at the Hebrew, there's two words. There's Ain. Ain Elohim. Ain there is not. There doesn't exist. Ain Elohim. It says corrupt are they, right? Notice there's a difference right here where it says they are corrupt. So even the word order in the English reflects a little bit of that change that's in the original Hebrew and have done abom abominable iniquity. What does it say over here? It says right here, it says and they have done abominable works. You notice that right there? You'll notice that even the word for abominable is the same word. It's the H8581, H8581, which we have the ta'ab, ta'ab, to'eba, to'eba, ta'ab, ta'ab, like disgusting, right? Then it says iniquity, right? Evel, evel, ewel, 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 aula, 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 avla. By right? Evla, more modern Hebrew bringing out Evla, Avla. But it sounds like almost in a modern pointing, Evel sound like evil, Evel, right? Evel, right? They've done evil. There is none that doeth good, right? So these two Psalms right here. And then we go to Romans right here, right? Well, Romans, let's look through this verse. It's not the same, but it does have some of the key words for the foolish heart. It says in Romans chapter 1, verse 21, because that when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not. They didn't glorify as Elohim. They didn't glorify him as Elohim. When they knew that there's a source, there's a power, there is judgment. Even though the judgment is delayed, you see, because the judgment is delayed, this is why they say Ain Elohim from the Hebrew perspective. Because it seems as though wicked people and ratchetness goes on, and there's people who believe, say, in God, and these believers, you know, this is kind of like one of the modern day atheistic arguments. You know, well, if there's a God, how come God allows this and allows that to happen? I mean, what sort of good God, you know, would allow these things to go on, right? Allow wicked people to do wicked things, you know, let bad things happen to so called, you know, innocent and good people, right? So here this verse is saying, because that when they knew Elohim, so there was a time that all of ancient humanity understood that there was one power, a true power, true good, true God, we could say the true Elohim. But it came to the point that they glorified him not as Elohim, right? Neither were they thankful, but became vain in the imaginations. There's some of the imagination saying, well, if there's a God, then, you know, this God and this person was, was, was religious. They went to church. They did the right thing. There was a good person. But how could this bad thing happen? I mean, they prayed that God protect them. But how could this, you know, so because these things happen, people say, well, this means that there is no God. Right? This is kind of like the modern view, right? In the vanity of their imaginations. And their foolish hearts was darkened. Now, we talk about the heart, the cardia, 
we have to recognize what the cardia is and what it what it symbolizes like the soul the mind right as it is the fountain and seat right where the flow come from of thoughts and passion desires appetites affections purposes endeavors speaking of the understanding so the hearts from the hebrew and the older use had like a twofold use to it in this context of writing and articulation has to do with like the mind you know the kind of emotional mind right we can almost say the irrational mind because sometimes emotions can lead us you know emotions the ancients had said that emotions you know um, make for good servants but poor masters so emotions can serve us the feelings but if we allow our feelings to master us we become like almost irrational brute beasts because see the brute beasts they move on instinct we have that reptilian cortex within us but we have to tame that beast you know, so that, you know, we can utilize that beast for our good, right? But not be mastered or have the animal nature master us, right? So this is where the foolish heart lead to that, that fall of man, as they call it, right? Or that, I can say, that um, unconsciousness, right? From that which they really should be conscious of, right? Of the understanding, the faculty, the seat of intelligence. Also, we have the will, the will, the character, Right, right. The sensibilities. Look at the sensibilities. Foolish heart. Foolish sensibilities. So, someone who is drunk driving kills an innocent person, and that innocent person believes, say, in God or Elohim, and we say, well, God doesn't exist or God is bad. Why did God do this? Right. But then it was the drunk driver that did this. See, the person or, or the people who are responsible, we don't blame them, but we say, well, Elohim should have done something. It's like, God, why do you let that happen? Right? But when we have freedom and will, right, say from the same and through the same Elohim to do whatever we want to, right, we don't want to be stopped when we want to do something that's beneficial to us. But now if we do something and it turns out bad, we say, well, why didn't God stop me? Well, why didn't God stop you when you did something and it was for your own pleasure? You, you, you see, you'd be like, well, what kind of God is this? You, why are you going to give me freedom and then take it back? The same way. So the foolish heart, the foolish mind, right, getting caught up on certain sensibilities and having these sensibilities, affections, emotions, desires, appetites, passion, rule over them, right? And see, this is the center, right, the inmost part of anything, right, the inmost part of anything. Bring it down right here, the thoughts, See, Strong's bringing out well right here. We're just looking at the Greek, the G2588 for heart, right? That is figuratively the thoughts or feelings of the mind, right? So there's the heart and the soul. Not to touch on this in great detail, we're going to pick up with the reptilian in your brain, the serpent in the garden, because it's important to understand this level of the ancient spiritual science, the Hebrew science, that it also had this application. This is why we can go to various areas and we apply these principles. And it's like when the scientist writes a formula, another scientist can understand if they can interpret, you know, the, the signs and the symbols, the same thing with the scriptures, right? The same thing with the scriptures. So right here, there was another area um, there is none that do with good. No, not one. Oh, that's when Yeshua, Robeno, when he was asked the question, right? He was asked the question. Let's see if we can bring this up. He was asked the question. Um, um, let's see. Um, um, there's none that do with good. Let me see if we can find this one right here, right? Let's see if we can find this one right here. It might be in here if we're choosing the right words to look up. Right. Yeah. Boom. There we go. Ma Matthew. 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 Chapter 19, verse 17. And he said to him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. Now, some make a link here when it says there is none good but one. Echad. Echad. Right. Shema'a Yisrael Yahweh Loheinu Yahweh Echad. 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 We say, Besema'a will the manifest caduce. Ahadu. Ahadu Amlak. Like the Ahadu in the Amharic and the Echad, Echad in the Hebrew. That is, right, Yeshua says Elohim, right? But if thou wilt enter into life, into Chai, Chayim, right? Keep the mitzvot, keep the commandments, right? Now, it's interesting because people take this verse to say, some interpret this verse as saying, well, see here, Robeno Yeshua, right, is saying that he is not God. 
right? They, many people use this particular verse to bring that kind of idea out. I thought the point, reading comprehension, according to what I'm reading here, the point seems to be about good, right? About good, right? Because if we back it up right here, right? We have the question, right? We have the question, right? And it says, and behold, one came and said to him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Good master, right? What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Let's just look at the Hebrew right here for a moment. Let's compare the verses right here. And let's look at the Hebrew. The unpointed and the pointed right here. Vehine isha nagash lav vayomar rabbi rabbi so he says rabbi hatob rabbi hatob he says rabbi like my rabbi or rabbi right scholar of torah is the hebrew sense rabbi hatob hatob rabbi hatob right good rabbi my good rabbi ma ma what hatob what good asher e'ese asher e'ese what good for me to do ve'ekne Right? That I may like acquire right, the life of the world, like to say eternal life or forever life, life to time indefinite. So the point right here, when this, um, when this, I think in the other gospel, it says that this was, uh, was he a lawyer? He was a young almost like a young disciple but young disciple making his way up you know in his studies so forth and so on now he came to Robain or Ainai Rabbi the Rabbi of Rabbi Yeshua HaMoshiach Jesus Christ and he says Rabbi Hato Ma To Ma right like what good now I don't know if you pick up on this but from our reasoning on this it's like when somebody comes to you and like kind of a little bit over flattery I don't know if you pick up on that. The spirit, not just the letter. So we're not just looking at the letter of the Lord, the letter of what's written, but the spirit. This is important, right? The spirit of what is said. Because we couldn't discern, you know, was that ta, what spirit he was saying, well, this is, that, that is your God, Ras Idonis. You know, we basically say, well, okay, like question, we question that, but we say, well, that's not my name. You know, and then we just showed, you know, by our sign off, you know how our name is written but we still give thanks to the comment right there and we said moreover let's bring this out concerning is the god of the bible right can god can the quote god of the bible be an atheist can the god of the bible be an atheist and is the god of the bible an atheist and in this context what is atheism okay here mark mark marco 10 and 18 and Yeshua said to him why callest thou me good remember he said that was it Rabbi Hato right so here we have synoptically it says and when he was gone forth into the way right the way Hadarek the Hadarek this is the way there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him right Rabbi Hato good master what now notice here here it's like according to mark mark has what shall i do matanyao my matthew had right he had what good shall i do so what shall i do that i may inherit right so the other way was that i may acquire right here we have that i may inherit you know like an inheritance let's look at the quick hebrew right here Right, so here he's Lemo Rabbi Hato Ma Eese Ma Eese Ma Eese Ma Eese Ma Eese 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 like for me to do Eese, right? Then it says Ve Irash, right? The one was Ekne, right? To to acquire. Here the word is a little different, right? So people say, well, it's all the same thing. Well, no, actually, from a Hebrew perspective, these are like. You ever see like something happens and many people are there, but they are like standing in different positions. And when it happens, they see different points of view of the same thing. This is what we have here, right? And this is very telling. So when people try to say, well, they was all just the same thing, just turning words around. No, it's a little more like real witnesses. What we have in the gospels is people testifying 
to similar things, but without collusion. I don't know if you know in law, collusion is where, you know, people get together and they sit down and they make up. So their testimony sounds the same, but then you say, well, where were you standing? Where were you standing? You recognize that you all can have seen the same thing because you said you saw this happen, but from where you were standing, this person's blocking you. How you, could you see that? You, all y'all colluded, all of y'all lying witnesses. So this is what shows us that the witness is actually accurate because there are these differences. Right? Because of the differences, it's like a real incident happened and many people witness and they interview everybody separately. And you'll see that they're saying similar things, but there's this one says it like this. Right? This one says that they heard this. Does it mean one is lying, one is telling the truth? No. Both of them are going from their recall. Right? Right? And this is how when we recall things. Right? We might not be exactly exact, but if one is seeking to be truthful, right, a real judge will be able to judge between it. Right? So a lot of people have misjudged the scriptures, perhaps because of their um, Hebrew scientific and scriptural linguistic illiteracy. Because you, you look at the English and the English make it sound and make it seem so, but from the original language it's much different. But anyway, this one says this right here, and Yeshua says to him, Right? Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. So some say, well, see, this proves that Yeshua is not God. Because see what he's saying right here. This doesn't deny his divinity, but it does. One could take that to be that. Why do you call me good? Because from Yeshua, Robeno's perspective, there's one that truly is Hatob. Now, from the Hebrew and the Judaic perspective, we know this is true. There's only one that is Hatob, according to true Hebrew theology, right? One who is truly the good, right? And even that good is he who create evil, according to the same theology, right? Luke chapter 18, verse 19, and Yeshua said to him, why callest thou me good? So we have this again. None is good, save one that is God, that is Elohim. How was the question posed here? And a certain ruler, right? A certain archon, archon. So we have the archon here from the Greek, right? Archon, a certain archon asked him saying, good master, Rabbi Hatob, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So here we have two witnesses that say inherit, right? And the other one like to acquire, right? To get, to acquire eternal life, right? So it's kind of interesting, this witness here, and let's go here, just look at the Hebrew here to compare the Greek and the Hebrew and the better Hebrew right here. Le more Rabbi Hato Ma'ese the Rash Chaye Olam. So we have this right here. Okay, it calls him Katin, uh, Katin. Why Yisha La? Why Yisha Yish Alehu? Vayishalehu, Vayishalehu a katin echad, katin a ruler echad, lemor, saying to him, Rabbi Hatob, by my rabbi, the good or good rabbi, good scholar of Torah, ma e what for me to do, what for me to do, the irash, that I irash, that I inherit, chaye olam, the other one was to acquire. Here is to inherit, right? So Yeshua gives this similar answer right here, right? You know, he gives a similar answer to this one right here. Let's go over here, okay? And then lastly, but not leastly, right here, okay? So John 10 and 33, the Yehudim, his fellows answered him saying, for a good work, we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Why they call it blasphemy? Like insulting Elohim? What's the insult to Elohim? And because thou, that thou, being a man, makest thyself Elohim. So now they're saying that he is making himself Elohim. If we look at the whole context there, not going here right now, that's debatable, but maybe from a certain point of view. So we have to recognize other people have their point of view. We have to look at the evidence and see, well, which point of view is really true. So here, in this is the God of the Bible and atheist. So the first thing we want to first to clarify is this whole Ain Elohim, where it says there is no God found in Psalm 14 and also Psalm 53. Right, these are the two, the key places. There are also other places. Now let's just bring forward some of the heart of our proof 
right, that the God of the Bible, the true God who said the Hebrews of the Israelites, the way he articulates and the prophets articulate his articulation is that he's saying that he is Elohim, right? Before him, there was no Elohim and neither with him, there is no Elohim and neither after him, there is no Elohim, right? So, and he says that I know not of any, right? There is none. He says there is none. Okay, the proof. All right, so here, right, right here, here's the first series of proof. We're trying to just narrow down the search of the main verses. Here we have like nine verses found, the key words, no, God there beside, beside, not besides. If you put beside, you're going to miss, it's not going to capture this. So here we have Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 35, where it says, to thee, it was shewed, it was shown, it was made visible to the eye. It was made visible that thou, so here speaking to, we could say, speaking in the singularity sense, speaking to each Israelite as one man and all of the Israelites as one man. So each of us in our individual capacity and all of us collectively as one. To thee it was shewed, it was revealed, it was made visible, it was apparent. As we would say today, it was apparent to you. Literally, that would be like it was showed to you. It was made visible to you. That thou mightest know, that you might do what? That you might know, not believe, not hope for, you know, not um, feel like it. Knowledge doesn't have anything to do with feeling. This is why we're talking about that emotional mind, the irrational mind. We have to keep it in check. That Yahweh, hey, that he who be who he be, he, right, is what? El, do we have El or Elohim? Here we have Elohim, that he is Elohim. There is none else beside him. The word beside him, Bad, Bad, right? Like Libado, Libado. Right, bad, bad, right? That's mean like beside, by itself, like as, uh, you know, like like alone, like like him only, him alone. So here we have Deuteronomy, Devarim, right? Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 35. Now let's just quickly go to the language here, to some of the key words in the Hebrew. Scroll down to Tanakh right here. It says, Ata har e Ta, har eta, it was revealed to you, shown to you. Ata hareta, la daat, la daat, daat, yada, to know. Ki for Yahweh or Yahweh, he who be who he be, who, 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 the pronoun he, ha Elohim. So the word right here with a definite article, I'm going to emphasize that right here, the Hebrew definite article, not just Elohim, but ha Elohim, ha Elohim. So we have El and we have Elohim. We also have the verses in the areas where we have Ha El, Ha El, Hail, Hail, the power, the Almighty. And here we have Ha Elohim. Now, though Elohim, right, we could say according to the basics of grammar, can be seen as a plural of powers, right? Here in the context, we see He who be who He be in the singularity. We talk about the Hebrew Trinity as one. Right, as one, he who be who he be, right? Even within the term Elohim, when applied to other people, so called Elohim Acharim, the other people's Elohim, it's always like they and them. But whenever applied to Yahweh, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, always in the singularity. So, in a, in a Hebrew sense, if we if looking at this like, like grammatically, it seems as though the Hebrew scriptures changes the Shemitic grammar, right? Kind of goes again, kind of breaks the rules of grammar. If we're going to be literalists, if we were the literalists and look at it like, you know, it's almost like, um, <laughs> about to say how black people, sometimes how we speak, they say, well, that's not the proper way saying ain't, right? Like ain, ain is almost like a way of saying ain't. Cause here it says right here, ki Yahweh hu hailehim ain od milbado or ain od milvado, ain. Like not od, od has a sense of going on continually, right? Milbado or milvado, right? Baad, like alone, right? Besides him, to say besides him, like from him alone. There is none, right? Continuing existing. The sense of od is almost like to go on, depends on the context of its use. Me, me is from, 
right? Le of bado of him alone, from of him alone. So besides him, that's where the sense can be kind of balled down, right? Besides him, right? So right here, 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 it's interesting because the Hebrew, as it's used for Yahweh, hey, for Yahuwah Echad, Hebraically goes against the usual convention, right, of what ones might think. See, there's no ancient rule book of like the Hebrew grammar. You know, there's no ancient rule book that, but basically there are some rules. Like, for example, if a plural word, if there's a plural word, right, say if we use a plural word instead, like masculine, then the verb usually should be masculine. If it's a plural word and it's feminine, right, then the, 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 the verb should also be plural feminine, plural masculine, plural feminine. If it's a singular word, usually the verb should also be singular, right? And if it's masculine, masculine, feminine, feminine, like that. But here for the Hebrew, we have a plural word, a noun, the Elohim, right? Which literally, yes, can be translated in a simple kind of awkward English as gods. It could be, whatever that might mean to different people. You know, that's just the placeholder that we use. More correctly, the powers, like powers. That's what we often say, like the natures. But concerning Yahweh, hey, he is the nature of natures. See, to say, we say like the God, Elohe, Hailehem. He is the Elohe, he's the Elohim of the Elohim. Right? He's the Elohim of the Elohim. So when it says this in Deuteronomy right here, right, it's saying who, who is he singular? Right? It could have says who ha el, who ha el, who ha el, right? Which is more like the short form of the el, right? Hail, hail, right? The power, right? The almighty, bringing out a sense of the mighty one, the almighty, right? Within translation, understand the spirit of the Hebrew and bringing out in the closest approximation, right? According to the spirit, right? Not just the letter, who ha el, that would be more grammatically correct. You know what I mean? Like, you might see, Hema, Hema, Elohim, Hema. Elohim, Hema would be like saying, like, like they are Elohim, right? But you will not find this in association in the majority of places in the scripts, right, concerning Yahweh. Hey, and I say the majority. There are some interesting other verses, but we're looking at, first of all, the rules, so to speak, right? right? Because the exception to the rule proves the rule. Right, because the exception to the rule proves that there must be some rule. Because otherwise, if there wasn't some rule, there would be no exception. You see, you get that there. So right here, this is our first proof right here, saying that he who be who he be, he is the Elohim. He is Ha Elohim. He is the powers, and that there is none other besides who, besides him himself. Now, one thing that doesn't get translated. All right, let's see right here. One thing that doesn't get translated, I know this is going to come out here. That was my point about the verse from Psalm 14, where we say, Ain Elohim. You heard us read Ain, but Ain, let's go over here, right here again. Let's compare. Now, note this right here. Note this right here. Here's the English. You see the words that are hyperlinked? When you see, there is none else beside him. Now, the verse says, Ain Od Milvado, Milvado. That's three words. But notice after the semicolon, there's only two. There's the H5750 and there's the H905 for the KJV, right? Going along with the King James translation. Let's go down to the Tanakh, right? When you go down to the Tanakh right here, right? Note this right here. Instead, we have right here, we have, notice which one, 5750, that was there in the English. And then we have the 905. That's odd. And that's Milbado. But it's this word, it's the H369 that doesn't come out. That's the Ayin, or more correctly, the Ain. Ayin. Ain means nothing. Maybe this is where we got Ain't from. Maybe Ain't really came from among once lost, now found from that Ain sense. Ain't. Ye ain't. Ain't. Ain. 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 Old Milbado. There's none other than him. There's nothing. There's naught. Right? It's like when they say atheist, right? Atheos. Theos is God, or some might say God, Theos, Theo, Theos, right? It's the God, or God, right, in the Greek. And they say atheo, atheo. The a is a negation, right? It's almost a short of the ain, a, atheos, no God. 
So here we have the same sense, right? Besides him. So he is the one, right? According to the Hebrew theology, and there is none other Elohim, right? Beside him, right? Now, this is just the first verse right here that we have right here for this. Let's go to Samuel, Samuel, 1 Samuel, Shemuel 2 and 2. My, there is none holy as Yahweh, hey, he who be who he be, for there is none beside thee. There's none beside thee. It's interesting, this particular verse here, because it goes from speaking in the third person concerning he who be who he be to the first person. So it says there is none as Yahweh, right? there is none as he who be who he be, for there is none beside thee, speaking directly to he. Neither is there any rock like our Elohim. Like who who's Elohim? Our Elohim. That's what the commandment that they call the Ten Commandments, but actually the commandment, the ten words, right? That's why that first command is what that first command and those commands are what they say. Right? We shall have none other right Elohim before him. Right? So all the other Elohim, right, that people have imagined, that they have made up, that they believe or they assume to be, all are Elohim Acharim. And that translated as other gods. Elohim, right? Gods in that sense, speaking of them, right? Acharim. But speaking of he who be who he be, he is the powers in the singularity. So we have a kind of a singularity, you know, like even in the sciences, they speak of singularity. Even in the ancient time, there was in the Hebrew theology, this kind of modern scientific sense of the singularity, right? Even though... In that attribute, Elohim is not his name in that sense, but it's that attribute, right? Who is he? He is the powers, right? In another way of saying the natures, right? But he is the God of gods, Elohe Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, of the Elohim, right? The only exception, there's only one exception when we talk about exception to the rule, is Yasharali, Yisrael. Because the judges of Israel, and even Moshe was called Elohim to Paro. He was made an Elohim to Pharaoh. And the judges of Yisrael, like in Psalm 82, verse 6, I have said, ye are, y'all are Elohim. All of you are children, are sons of Elion, of the highest. All right? So we see that connection right there. Not in a singular connection like with Moshe, but we see the term only being applied to those who are his agents, his representatives, according to the covenant, the berit, in that covenantal, in that good standing of the covenant, Yasharala Yisrael is Elohim, right? Elohim, not before the Elohim, but to represent the Elohim to the people who do not know him, the Elohim, right? So it says, there is, neither is there any rock like Eloheinu. Now, this is a very archaic concept right here, where our Elohim is likened to rock, right? Is likened to rock. So some places will say that our rock is not their rock, right? <laughs> and now, from the ancient concept, this was a way of describing Right, the firmness, the strongness, maybe the crystalline structure too, if we get into the science of it, right, of the power, right, of our Elohim. But this is another verse here that brings out this same concept right here, the same context concerning he who be who he be, that he is the Elohim, right? And yes, there are other Elohim, but he is the Elohim of Elohims, right? And in truth, there is really no true Elohim besides him. So any Elohim, right, must be an Elohim in and through Hilahim, the Elohim. And therefore the Elohim, we're going to get to those verses, says that he know not of any, there is no other Elohim. So there we see the Elohim, Yahweh hey, saying that yes, he can be and he is an atheist in the context of, he don't believe in these other Elohim. In fact, he know these other Elohim are not Elohim. If he is the Elohim of Elohims, he know they're not, right? So it's not just a belief in it. He, he knows it, but he expresses something very interesting that's often overlooked, you know, by the latter-day counterfeit Christianizers. Here it says, Ki ain kadosha kayahwa, ki ain bilateka, ve ain asura kaloheinu. So 
hear again the word ain and I think the ain doesn't get brought out there you see the ain doesn't get brought out there you see it says for there is none beside thee you see what has the h1115 right now let's go down here to the Tanakh where it breaks down the Hebrew from the Hebrew in the Hebrew the 115 you see what's the h115 and then right after that's the h369 and that's the ain that's the ain ain right because they're the ancient Hebrew ain't <laughs> Right, y'all didn't say that. Right, the ancient Hebrew ain't the ain. Right, as if from a primitive meaning to be nothing, ain. Right, ain sof. Right, no ending. Right, in that sense, ain, ain, not exists. Right, a non-entity. They're not really entities for real. Like a like a like a statue of a person compared to the real living person is a non-entity. It's an entity, but the entity that is seeking to represent is just a imagination. It's just a figure, a, a similitude. It's not the actual substance. It's like a shadow. A shadow is not the the actual person or object that's standing in light. So the Elohim of the Elohim is the light, in other words. Now the object standing in the light is Yasharala, Israel. This is why the Elohim title, even in Psalm 82, verse 6, is properly ascribed to the judges of Yisrael and not to foreign gods, other angels, some heavenly assize, or any of that. We understand how people may say that, but they're not coming from a covenant perspective. Therefore, they do not see the proper context. It's like if you really have a contract, you know, an agreement that you believe in that works for you, you're going to study the terms of it. So you're going to know the terms of it. So in some way, they're including certain things that automatically is smacked down by the terms of the contract and the terms of the covenant, right? Generally used as a negative particle. So some might say this is the reason why, right? You know, like ain't ab, like fatherless, you know, something ain't, ain't, like no, not. So we see the negative sense. There is no, what? There is no God, right? Besides he who be who he be. All right, so here, Second Shemuel 7 and 22. Wherefore thou art great, O Yahweh, right? Thou art great, Yahweh Elohim, he who be who he be, the powers. For there is none like thee. There is what? None. I'm sure the Ain is in there, but no, they don't really translate that there. But they're going to translate the 430. The 430 is the Elohim. Neither is there any Elohim. Neither is there what? Any Elohim. Neither Elohim. Ain, ain Elohim, what? Besides thee. Right? Now here it uses Zula. Zula. Before it uses Bad, right? In 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 um um Ain old Milbado. Milbado. Right? Le Bado. Right? Here you use Zula. Zula. Right? Beside thee. According to all that we have heard with our what? Ears. Because it says Shema Yisrael. Shema. Ha'azinu, to hear, give ear, faith, the emuna, right, that credit, that admittance comes by what? Hearing, and hearing by the what? By the debar, the dibre Elohim, by the word, the oracle of Elohim. So this is what it testified here in 2 Samuel 7 and 22. Let's go here quickly as well, just to get to some of the basic precepts of this right here. Let's go straight down to the Hebrew, and there we have the Ain there. Right, the H369, right there. But it, it's not translatable in the King James. So they don't bring that out in the Strongs, right? It says, Al Cain, Gadalta Adonai Yahweh, right? Ki Ain, Kamoka, Ve'ain Elohima Zulateka, Be Kol Asher Shamainu, Be Azanenu, Shamainu, we hear Shamainu, Beaznenu, we heard as we've heard, right? Bekal, all that we have heard, Bekal Asher, Shamainu, Beaznenu, all that we've heard with our ears. Now, here it uses this term right here. Let's just bring it back to the English right here Zula, Zulatika, Zulatika, right? A removal, a putting away, except, you can see it in a prepositional sense, beside, with the exception of, except. So it says, there is none with the exception 
There is no, so we basically say there is atheism, that the true Elohim, Hailahim, Eloheinu, right, is saying atheism with the exception of him. There is none. These other ones, people, you know, they, they do statues, carvings, other things. Okay, they believe and they think about it. Yeah, but in the reality, there is one source, one power, one power of powers, one nature of nature, one Elohei Hailahim, and that be he who be who he be, Eloheinu, right? Accept that. You know, you know, so this idea right here, so in some of the translations, this idea is brought out as beside, but only save with a sense of accept, right? Accept, accept he who be who he be, right? So now this is a, a confession of Yasharal of Yisrael, but let's go to First Chronicles 17, 20, Yahuwah. There is none like thee, right? Neither is there any Elohim beside thee. So this is actually Yisrael saying that, there's atheism vis-a-vis other Elohim, Elohim Acherim. There's atheism, right? In other words, for us, we do not credit, admit that they are true and they're real. We recognize other people believe them, right? This is what they believe, right? And we, we kind of learn about that, but we don't learn to do what they do, but we learn, okay, what it is, and this is what they believe, right? But we do not accept that as true. We do not admit, we do not have faith in that. We do not admit, we don't credit, we don't extend any credit to that, right? It's, it's incredible to us. It's not credible based on what we give our credit, the covenant, right? So Yahuwah, there is none like thee, neither is there any Elohim beside thee. And notice the condition, there's a conditional to this, according to all that we have heard with our ears, right? According to all that we have heard, right? Bekal Asher, Right? Let's get to Isaiah. Now, Isaiah is now going to bring proclamation. This was before that. That was mostly proclamation from Yasharallah, from Yisrael, from we as the Beta Israel, right? From the Hebrews, from the, you say, the covenant, the faithful of Yisrael. Because really, when it's about Ain Elohim, it's not so much even talking about other people, it's really talking about amongst our own people. So in Psalm 14 and 53, it's not speaking about other people, right, that don't believe in our Elohim, but our own people, right, because they, they are going after Elohim Acherim, other people's ideas. Even in a sense, worldly atheism, right, is uh, another is Elohim Acherim to us, right, you know, even though we are seeking to articulate that according to the plain terms, the, the God of the Bible is the God of the Bible and atheists. <laughs> You know, people say, what? How could you say that? And people are getting very upset or saying, he's crazy, he's off. He, he, you're going to hell. Okay, well, hopefully we'll come out of it, you know. Yeah? Come out of her, my people. Yeshaya, Yeshayayu, 44 and 6. Thus saith Yahuwah, HaMelech, the king, the king of Yisrael, and his redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts. Now, something very interesting about this verse right here. Right? When we speak about the Father, the Son, we speak about the Hebrew Trinity, the true Trinity. If you can see that first part we just read, right? He who be who he be, right? The King of Israel, speaking of the Father, and his Redeemer, Yahuwah of hosts, and his Redeemer, right? We could say Jehovah Sabaot, right? Yahuwah Sabaot. What's said right here? I am the first, and I am the last. And besides me, there is no Elohim. Is that not, even in the modern kind of view, almost can be taken as a pronouncement of what people would call, or the world will call, atheists, being an atheist, right? That besides him, there is no Elohim, with the exception of him, right? So there's, there's atheism, but the exception to the rule is Yahweh hey, is he who Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem according to the Hebrew, right? The the Torah, the covenant keeping faith, right? The faith of the King of Kings and Hamoshia and His Christ. Thus saith Yahuwah, the King of Israel. Let's go down here to the Hebrew. Just get a hear of this. Just to look over. The, it says Koh Amar Koh like this Amar Yahuwah Melech Israel. He who be who he be the Melech, the King. The sovereign Israel of Israel. Ve Golo, Ve Golo, Ve Goalo, Goalo Yahuwah Tsebaot, and his Redeemer, 
go allo 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 yahua sabaot of hosts he who be who he be of armies ani i rishon ani Rishon, I, Rishon, Rishon is the first. In fact, Rishon comes from Rosh, which is head in Hebrew. Ri'is, Rosh, head. I am first, the head. Wa'ani, Va'ani, and I, Achiron, 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 not, not Achiron, Achiron, but Achiron, right? And the last, like I'm the head, I'm going to say the, the head, the first part, and, you know, the last. Right, the beginning, you know, the idea of the beginning and end in the Alpha Omega sense, that's where they get it from. Right? U mi baladai, u mi baladai, and besides I, u mi baladai, right, and besides I, right, ain Elohim. So we have Elohim saying ain Elohim, but the context here is u and mil baladai, baladai. Right, u mi baladai, and besides I, right, ain Elohim. Now remember we began off ain Elohim from Psalm 14, but there is the fool that says in his heart, right. So they won't say this with their mouth. <laughs> That's why we say that verse is not talking about atheism in this modern day sense of atheism, but now just taking what the word means, no God, right, not believing in a God, not accepting a God, saying there is no God. Well. Yahuwah, right? You know, Melech Israel, the king of Israel, and Yahuwah, the Goalo, his his redeemer, Yahuwah Tzabaot, says what? Ani Rishon Avani Achron Aua Mila Baladai Ain Elohim. So we have the very same Ain Elohim. Now, note this right here. I want you to look at this word right here for a moment. Look at the KJV quickly right here. KJV, right? Notice here, notice the words after it says, and I am the last and beside me, right? It has the 1107 and has the H430. That's from the English. But now as we go to the Hebrew, I want you to see right here, these numbers. Look at these numbers right here. Notice we have, I'm reading from right to left here. We have the H1107, right? The H1107, you see that? That's what we saw just now. But notice this word that they don't put in even the Strong's hyperlinks. They leave out this word, right? It says Ain. It's the H369. They leave that out. But see, that's because you're reading English and they figure that's what they give you in English. But now when you go to the Tanakh, you go to the Hebrew, you say, wait, there's this word Ain there that they leave kind of... They write something that more or less gives you the sense of it in the translation, but not fully. They don't give you the word, <laughs> right? Ain Elohim, Ain Elohim. There is no Elohim. That's what the, they said the fool says that in his heart, right? But Yahuwah says that through the prophet, right? And we, Yisrael, we say that with our mouth, but in the context, Right, the spiritual context. Besides, he who be who he be. That's what it says. Before him, right, we shall have no other Elohim. The Elohim Acherim. Put other people Elohim. But it's almost like the what Robeno and what is said in the Brit Chadash should get behind me, Satan, because these are adversarial, adversarial concepts. Like somebody say, oh, well, everybody got a God. Well, yeah, but he's the Elohei Ha'ilahim. He is the Elohim of Elohim. In the first sense. Right, he is the power of us as his covenant keeping children, right? The Shoftim, the ones who he has appointed for that Baraka, if we would just Shema, if we would be obedient. Hmm. Ishaya 44 and 8 says, Fear you not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time and have declared it? Ye y'all, see the ye there speaking to more than one. So saying to us, we are his witnesses. He says, y'all are even my witnesses. So if he says that there is no Elohim besides him, what are we doing accepting all these Elohim? I mean, we can, you know, other people have their right to do what they're doing in their, in their cipher, right? You know, basically, you know, other people have their, you know, we can admire their faith, right? But nothing... 
right? Gives us a cause to believe it, to admit it, to credit it, or to extend any credit to it, or to take it to ourselves. Because once we do, we put their Elohim Acherim before ours. And that's why I think a lot of folks fall into the worldly sense of atheism instead of the divine sense, right? Because let this mind be in you. Ye y'all are even my witnesses. And this is the reason why Yeshua said to that that Katzin, Achad, to that, that Arkan, that, that ruler among the Yehudi, what he said when he came with the Rabbi Hatob, Rabbi Hatob, oh, good master, good master. You could have said Rabbi, you could have said that, but what he said, Hatob, the good. And she would check him on that right there, right? Because, or we can get to the other Isaiah verse, the verse that bothers people when it says that, you know, that he create evil. People say, oh, oh my God, no, that can't be. See, because you're not in reality. <laughs> You're not dealing with reality, right? You don't have, you know, the Hebrew scientific literacy, right, of these scripts here. Y'all are even my witnesses. Is there a God beside me? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Is there a God beside me? Now, when we hear this in English, we think like standing side by side or something, right? You know, but really the, the, the sense about bilade, biladai, you have this here, apart from me, except me, without me. Right, so besides, we get caught up on that word besides, and we're not looking at the real Hebrew sense. Except, right, this is why in Psalm 82, verse 6, where it says, I've said, All of you, Atem, Elohim, Atem, Atem, you all, y'all males, y'all judges, Shoftim, Shotrim, y'all, my children, the children of Yisrael, y'all are Elo, y'all are to be Elohim. To these people who know not Elohim, but y'all can only be Elohim if you know there's no Elohim but me, but he who be who he be. But if you're gonna fall after that, well then then you will fall, right? You will die like men and fall as one of the princes. But then arise, O Elohim. Then so we even have that sense of the resurrection, you know, that resurrection sense, even in the old testament, so to speak. Right? He goes on to say, Yay. <laughs> There is no Elohim. I know not any. I think this is the crucial verse right here. This is the crucial verse. Hopefully ones and ones, you know, I know we kind of go through it kind of not long, but we have to describe, you know, we have to present the presentation. And if ones don't want to get the full or full of the presentation, you know, download it, pause it, rewind it. You know what I mean? You know, we share this, you know, for those who can receive it. Yea, there is no God, right? That says, I know not any. Now, if this is not a crucial verse right here, right? Because the prophets, right? They spoke on behalf of he who be who he be, right? So let's go down to this verse right here, just to see this in the Hebrew right here. It says, Allah tifchadu, Allah tifchadu, the Allah terhu, hello, meaza, hisha maetika, ve hia gadti. The Atem Edai, Atem, you all Edai, Edai, my witnesses. Hey, Yesha Eloha, Mia Baladai, hello. Well, he says, he says, hey, Yesh, right? The first part was hello, right? Like, has it, have I not, is it not, may Oz, right? From then, he, uh, Shema. Itika that I've caused like you to to hear you would cause you to you know you know like to be told in that sense ve he got the t right and like cause you to hear it and cause um it to be told in that sense ve atem and atem and you all male speaking to the sons to be first in place you must be first in merit a die a die my witnesses hayesh is it not, does it not exist? Like not existing? Yesh is actually the opposite of Ain, right? Yesh lo, there is for him. Ain lo, there's not for him. So the Ain Elohim. So here he says, Yesh, asking the question, like, like, like the not, the, the exists, it has a sense of um, almost like, doesn't there exist? Like, don't exist? Doesn't exist? Eloha, Eloha, Elo, Elo, Eloha, like Elohim, Mia Baladai. Does there exist? Hayesh. Is there in really existence? Is, is there really an entity? I'm not talking about a statue. I'm not talking about a carving. I'm not talking about something written on the wall. But does it really exist? 
right, as 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 something that exists besides just a, a one, two, three dimensional kind of representation made by man's hands, right? And there's not a sor, sor is rock, bal ya daiti. Now here's what they did. Bal ya daiti. Bal I I don't know. I don't uh, even the bala uh, bala yadaiti has a sense of has a sense of um not just I know not in the past sense but it's not possible to know it because it doesn't exist. And from his perspective, he who be who he be, therefore we should take his word for it because when we really even research it for ourselves, what he's saying here is true. But here the word that they translate notice when they say there is no God. They actually use the word sor, sor, right? And sor right here, right, is an interesting term. It actually means a rock, right? Because the ancients seem to have used a lot of metaphor, right? Metaphor. Like in many ancient cultures, we see that, you know, where they use animal metaphor, nature metaphors, right? Kingdoms, you know, like, you know, and then it goes on to say, they that make a graven image are all of them vanity and their delectable things shall not profit and they that are their own witnesses they see not nor know that they may be ashamed so sometimes you're trying to tell ones who might believe in these Elohim Acherim right and you're trying to show them what you and you're getting frustrated because basically what the word is saying right here is that they are their own witnesses they don't see, they don't see what we're saying, they don't see this, nor can they know this, right? That they may be ashamed, that they may say, oh man, it is true. Bush, right? The word bush, right? Bush, be abashed. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, I'm embarrassed. So for real, for real, you know, uh, worshiping Elohim that don't even exist, really, besides in people's imaginations. Now, of course, they will try to turn that around on us and maybe say the same thing. But remember, this is in our scripture. What is written in their scriptures? Who hath formed a God or a molten, right, a graven image that is profitable for nothing, right? A L, L. Now, remember, they, they will show you like the Canaanite statue. There's a Canaanite statue that they said this is L and everything, right? And it's a, it's a molten image. It's exactly what we're talking about. And then they say, well, that's where the Hebrews got it from. But what the Hebrews have right here is saying, don't do that. So how are you saying? But it makes more sense that what the Hebrew narrative is saying about the other nations going against, you know, he even what Paul says that they all knew. But even when they knew, they became vain in their imagination. That's where you can find these statues of a L, a Canaanite L, or Yahweh, or something, whatever they want to say. You know what I mean? Because the Israelites didn't do what they were supposed to do. They were supposed to destroy those things. But we know from the scripts that they did a half-assed job. And therefore, we come down into this dispensation today. Isaiah 45 and 5. I am Yahweh, hey, and there is none else. There is no God. Now here, the other verse where it says there is no God, actually the Hebrew uses the word sword. There is no rock. But here in 45 and 5, it says, I am Yahweh, hey, and there is none else. There is no Elohim, right, beside me, right? Now here it uses the word Zula, as we mentioned before. I gird thee, though thou hast not known me. So even saying to us that he is the one that girds us, but we are in ignorance, right? We are not knowing. We are not comprehending. We are not recognizing. Right? We're not recognizing this reality. And part of the reason why ones don't recognize right, this reality, look at, look at, and the next verse goes on, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am Yahweh, and there is none else. It also reminds me of what some of the Mohammedans right, and the Muslims, what they be saying, la ilaha la wa, you know, la ilaha Allah, there is no God but God. So even in the principal sense, we see some correspondence right here, right? Even one could reason on that, whether there's an atheistic um, component within that, right? In other words, for those who believe in the true power, right, means that if we extend credit and credence and trust to the true power, we can't, you know, be dabbling in a lot of, like that's what the Israelites, I think, sought to do. 
You know, as I was about to mention a moment ago, you know, they put a little bit of credit in this, you know, like you put a little bit of credit in so-called quote God and put a little credit in the devil and think that they're competing like you're watching a sports game. Right. You're going to go round and round, you know, in the in the in the what they call it, the Ferris wheel, like the Ferris wheel of Babylon. Right. Until the time. So here these two verses bring it out in Isaiah. Very, very good. And let's get to this particular verse right here. Just touch on this really quickly. Get a read of this right here. So we have right here. Ani Yahweh ve'en od zulati. Right. And there is none. Right. Od. Od. Right. Od here. Bringing out od. Od. Right. Od. Going around. Continuance. The sense of going around. Continuing. Going on. Right. There is none continuing. There's none else. Right. You know, that's why, if you notice, they be digging up a lot of these other so-called gods and everything. But this uh, Judeo-Coptic, this Judeo-Messianic, some might say Judeo-Christian way is still there. Yes, people can say for better or for worse, right? You know, and even he shows that among his own people, among the Israelites, there were some that were saying, Ain Elohim, in the sense that the Elohim of Elohim was, was not even existing. Right? And people do this from a selfish, uh, irrational mind. So if, if God or the power Elohim don't do what I want or expect, therefore he doesn't exist. Even though some of these same hypocrites, this same Elohim might have done things for them before. <laughs> or they assume so. But now they don't want to. It's a very selfish kind of a thing. You know what I mean? It's like a fair weather so-called friend. You know what I mean? You know, you know you are only, we're only in covenant. You know, or you're only my friend. We only have this relationship, right? If you please me every moment. But if you do something that just displeases me, then I'm going to break the whole thing off. That's what the Israelites did. And that's what some still be doing. It's, it's a very kind of an immature, you know, not fully formed. But here it says, Ani, Yahuwah, with Ain Oda Zulati, Ain Elohim, A Azirka. Ah, azerka, azerka, the law, ye da eti, we law and not ye da etani, ye da etani, you have not known ani, ah, ye da etani, the law, we law, not ye da etani, you have not known me, you have not yada, 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 ah, yada, ah, to know, to learn to know to perceive, to see, to find out, to discriminate, in a sense, distinguish by experience, you know? So what we're seeking to do right here, even with this reasonment, is also that discernment that's in order for us to know, right? In order for us to know, oh, let's get that next verse right here. Let's see if we can get that next verse right here. How can we get to that next verse? I think, okay, the verse probably comes up over here, right? Okay. Well, not because of those words, but you can you get the basic sense. Isaiah forty five twenty one, right? You can see it here again. There is no Elohim, right, beside me, right? A just El, 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 source, right? Getting to the root. The root of Elohim is El, right? The power, the Almighty, right? And Savior. There is none besides me. Now, here, if you notice, they bring out the word ain, right? Finally, here in the KJV, there is none beside me. There's none except for me, right? That's why he says, you shall have no Elohim before me. So we say to the other ones, get behind me, you know, Satan, <laughs> so to speak. Last one, but not least, under this survey, because there's another way to survey this too as well, but this is just one survey since we're already a little over our expected you know, um, complete time for this vlog video is Hosea, Hosea 13 and 4. Yet I am Yahweh Eloheka, thy power, thy Elohim, from the land of Egypt, Mitzrayim. So the comedic Mitzrayim connection does not offend us, you know, but at the same time, we're not going to give up, you know, the testimonies of our ancestors for even our related peoples. If they have their testimony, so be it. 
you know so there are some that then will take this and say well you see they're saying that the god came out so is 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 egypt that created every come on they, they couldn't even create themselves to keep going on if it wasn't for the white man and the other scholars that were reading the bible to dig up some of these things we would not know them today let's just be keep it straight right and thou shalt know no god like no elohim shall know no elohim but me for there is no savior besides me no savior built right here besides me except for me now what's interesting about this is in the brit Hadasha sense the new testament sense and from a yehudi a jewish a real true yehudi perspective as yeshua said he said um you all worship that which you know not we know worship for salvations of the yehudi right it's kind of very interesting you know you know what the true view there where he says the father and the son being one remember that that emphasis there right and so one said that oh he blasphemed you're a man but make it yourself god but then what does he point to he points to the psalms like you know even the psalm 82 and 6 and other psalms where it says i've said you are elohim right and he said the scripture cannot be broken so now when ones see that in the english going from a western gentile kind of version or even perversion of so-called christianity and biblical teaching they can come up with a lot of reasonments a lot of speculation and this is what you get in a lot of the different denominations right but then when we get to the hebrew right and we can understand the root words and context of scripture right and kind of more focus on how can i say we can more focus on the spirit right right of the word but firstly discern what the letter of the word is pointing to it becomes very much more you know very much more clear right very much more clear so right here 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 right ain old milbado so here on the elohim reasonment right here so yes we would say that the El Elohe Israel, the God of Israel, we say the God of the Hebrews, right? Can he be atheist? Can God of the Bible be atheist? The Elohim, Ha'ilahim, we're speaking about, Ha'kadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem. Well, yes, of course, and, and, and he is, right? Can he? Does he have the ability to? Yes, and it's demonstrable, even in the nine or so verses we just basically went through. I'd like to go into some of them a little deeper there's also another set of verses right that we can follow up with additional proof but at least to share this basic proof right here you know and have one's muse over it now this let me just say this for the record does not mean that we are advocating you know the modern uh, post greco-roman nowadays so-called atheism right but we're saying to the brothers and sisters don't fear that because they say there's no god and you get all twisted like you know understand what it really means right both in the modernistic sense and then as we look at the scriptures let's understand the true context like it says the fool have said in his heart his heart means that at the center of his modus operandi right not out of his mouth right he didn't say out of his mouth but in his heart like in his mind Right, so that means that he could be going about like religious, say I believe in God or whatever like that, and saying things. But really, in his heart, it's almost like, almost like what Yeshua was saying to them, you know, to the scribes, especially the scribes. We got to touch on the scribes. Wow, the power of the ancient scribes, right? You know, and the power of writing. But the scribes, the the lawyers, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all the religious ones. What was Yeshua saying about them? It was the same, you know, the same points you know what i mean it's almost like they spoke like they believed right in his father he says that's what yeshua said to them ye of your father right hasatan and he said from the beginning from bereshith he was a murderer speaking of the kayan the kayan aspect right he was a murderer right from the beginning the murder of habel ebel right the hebrew we say osiris or shurian right so to speak the principle of the matter looking at principle over personality right so he said those things to them because he was pointing out something even to us that they were like these ones even among israel even among us and then we have to look at ourselves too are we saying that we believe so when one said this is your god i was like you know it was like kind of like a, a kind of a neuter like you know like zone it was like like the scales then budge because 
there was really nothing to really weigh it on. I mean, what was he saying? I mean, I even just questioned that whole God word, you know, that God concept, you know, because this is something that when we understand the ancient Hebrew and the fact that this term Elohim, how it was used both for the true as a, as a noun, as a attribute, and as a noun in the word, how it was used, not a name, not a name so much, not for us, but as a noun, an attribute, a word, how covenantally we are to use it and understand it, but then how amongst people who spoke similar Afro-Asiatic, Afro-Shemitic language, how they use this right, same term in an almost 180 degree opposite sense. Right? So when we find Elohim in the majority of places in the Hebrew scriptures being ascribed to Yahweh, hey, to El Elohei Yisrael, the God of the Hebrews and the Israelites, it's, it's a word that in and of itself in other areas of other gods, so-called Elohim Acharim of other people, it has a plural context. But whenever speaking of Yahweh, hey, he who be who he be, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be the name, it's always in that divine singularity, right? To say the powers of powers, as we say, the nature of natures, getting to the source, right? That's why He says, before Him, right? Before Him there was none, and after Him, right, there shall be none, right? But the only ones that even have this true, you know. Um, privilege of having that attribute assigned to them, right, is called Yisrael, but even there, there's a condition. There's a condition for Israel, right? That's why that psalm, Psalm 82, is such an important psalm. Most people get the wrong impression because they see gods and they go kind of, kind of, kind of a little goofy, kind of a little buck wild. They just be thinking about whatever they saw on TV, whatever they heard about, just with gods and everything, you know, and they start to fantasize. That's what I talk about in the verse that we pointed out from Romans in the vanity, right, of the imaginations, right? So this is not subject to I and I imagination, right? This is subject to I and I study, right? And based on, you know, the evidence, right? The God of the Hebrews, we say the God of the Bible, the, the true Elohim of Yisrael expresses this divine atheism, right, vis-a-vis, -vis, right, so-called other gods or gods that be. Now, I know we're not finished on this right here, 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 but let's just kind of come to a, a seal-up point at this point right here. For now, for now, for now, return to the subject matter. Just take a little sailor right here, show some of the demonstrations right here. Some of the exhibits, right? Elohim, right? Elohim. What does it mean, Chabarim? What's the connection of El? We know El. From the Hebrew sense, El and Elohim is related, especially in the covenant. Some people get a little goofy. They say this God is of something else because they're going after other Elohim, but the sense of this as Almighty, definite article Ha El. There we have another Afro Asiatic Shemitic word, Ha El, Hail. Right, Chayel, Chayel. We also have Chayel, both in the Hebrew, both in the Royal Amharic. Here we have Elo, Elo, or in some pronunciations, Eloha, right? Eloa, some would say, or Eloa, Eloa, right? Eloa, Eloha, some might say, but Elo, 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 Eloha. This also being utilized, and even if we get to the very beginning. So here, 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 brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, Selah, uh, Selah for right now on the Elohim, a little bit on the Elohim reasonment right here, here, here.